Hey everyone, welcome to the third video of our food forest workshop brought to you by the Agroforestry Academy. And in the last video, if you remember, and if you haven't watched the first two videos, go back and watch them so that you can catch up on the content. But in the last video, we talked about the basic principles of agroforestry. And we mentioned five principles. Optimizing energy and resources available. Succession of species. Stratification of species. Planting in abundance and adapting to a main crop if you're a commercial producer. And we emphasize the idea that all the principles, the four last principles, they always go back to the first principle, which is optimizing resources and energy. Because that's the strategy nature uses to enrich life on the planet. And now we're going to synthesize these into techniques that you're gonna be able to use in your garden or in your farm in a practical way. So let's go to the first one, which is covering the soil. Let's get right to it. Yeah, Felipe, so on the topic of optimizing resources, we understand that the most powerful way of doing that is really using all this organic matter to cover the soil. There's so many benefits for covering the soil. This is really the one biggest tip I'll give you, something you can go home and do right now and have immediate impact in your garden today. Really, you need to cover the soil. Our basic law is that I can't see any of the soil exposed to the sun. Really, when you cover the soil, uh, you're giving it shade, you're giving it condition for the life to live there. You know, no one really wants to live under the sun. So if you give it shade, that's where the life is going to come. That's where it's going to feel cool for all the animals to party on, dude. Uh, other than that, we're giving it protection for humidity. You know, we're really retaining the, the moisture, you know, and this is so powerful in so many areas of the world. We really need to retain that moisture and ease up the, the pressure on the irrigation. Um, yeah, that's certain, and it's interesting because um, the organic matter really acts as a buffer, right? Mm -hmm. Because apart from, from moisture, it also impacts the temperature of the soil. Yes. When it's too cold outside, it maintains the soil warmer. When it's mm -hmm. too hot outside, it maintains the soil cooler. And that's essential to have a, a more constant temperature in order not to damage the tree's roots yeah. and the microorganisms in the soil. Yeah. We also, it, it protects the soil, the structure of the soil. You know, we said about for, for the sun where, you know, all the life goes away if it's exposed to the sun, but in the rain as well, the heavy drops, that's compacting the soil and that's creating erosion and that's really breaking up the structure. So for, for the rain and for the sun, uh, definitely more, more benefits there for us covering the soil. You know, all that organic matter is also giving back information, in turn feeding, in turn uh, degrading and becoming black soil, rich black soil. So this material eventually you, you know so here we've got perfect examples of that where we started with a really red soil and now it's just nice rich and black because of all that organic material that's that's throughout time yeah it's really one of the the, the covering the soil be it with live plants because that's important as well you mm -hmm. know green covering when you've got that soil completely covered with plants and dead decaying material mm -hmm. as well as coverage these two are really important to maintain a thriving microorganisms and insects community in the soil and these are really the ones that are feeding the plants with all the rich substance that they produce and give back to plants in return for car yeah. carbohydrates all and that they rich, keep that thriving that rich fungus that's really stuck onto that wood onto that organic material that fungus is priceless really you know like uh, you know obviously initially we feed the soil uh, with all the manure and all of that you know all the organic manure but really eventually we're hoping that the animals the life in the soil will feed in turn feed the soil so each time we renew the crop we use less and less uh, input external manure input because we're really counting on the life in the soil to do that exactly. beautiful work for us. And also we're producing the material to cover the soil on the spot, right? When we're going to start out a system, we bring in whatever it is that we have of organic matter from outside, grass clippings, whatever we have to cover the soil, right? We, we, we use what we have, but then we plan to have more organic matter produced there. So let's take a look underneath here. Let's take a peep underneath the, the organic matter to see what's going on here. We've got this old papaya trunk that we put here on the soil 
not two months ago and you can see already what's doing to the soil all the life that's thriving underneath let's take a look so really you can see it's amazing the amount of insects that you have here and all the roots of the plants are already thriving here really the roots of the plants come to the underneath of the material the, the organic matter in order to get all the moisture and the nutrients that are here it's really amazing you can see everything the moisture the crumbled structure of the soil that's formed by the microorganisms and the insects so it's really a no-brainer first thing you have to do cover your soil with whatever you have and plant more to have more organic yes yeah, so we're really planting material to cover uh, the soil so this is an example of 40 days 50 days where this the, this trunk this papaya trunk has been sitting there we've got an example of a two-year-old wood we, we've, we've laid down this trunk of wood here and it's really kind of disappearing now and uh, it's really decayed to the point where it's just become black soil uh, for a long time you, you would lift it up and you see all that fungus all that life living underneath that wood but now you try lift it up it's just crumbling so you can really see it just becoming black soil as you can see in this case here you know so it's really beautiful we've got all the roots working here still as well we've got great amount of fungus on this wood here and if you if you really pick on it if you really pick on it and you see some of the ones on, on the side this next pieces of wood it's really just decaying and already becoming that rich black soil yeah for sure so um that's the, the basic first principle. important technique um let's move on to the next one which is companion planting also a very important one let's go there and check it out all right, so companion planting, right? That's the art of putting different species together in a way that they're gonna produce better and one is gonna benefit the other. And in order to do that, we're gonna bring back two principles that we mentioned when we were talking about principles in the last video, which are the stratification of species and the succession of species, right? So in the specific spot, we've got a few things going on there. Why, why don't we explain it for us? Yeah, in this particular bed, we have a good example here. We've got the beans and the corn that's going to be harvested within 30 days. We've got the cassava here for like a 10 month harvest. We've got planted here papayas. We're looking on a 14 month harvest on that. And then uh, we're going to be starting harvesting the coffees from the second year onwards. Uh, you know, right next to this, this coffee bed, we, you know, in consortium with all this veg, we've got a, a row of trees where we planted trees for a future period. And then we start harvesting from, from those trees, uh, you know, from the third and fourth and fifth year. And, and we've got things planted all the way to the 15th, 30 years, you know, so. Yeah, we've got um, some timber trees here, right? We, which will be, we're going to harvest the wood in 20 to 30 years. So we really have um, harvest from the third month up to 30 years, right? And these, these are all planted at the same moment. So in each stage, of evolution of the system we've got a specific consortium which will have at least two layers for example first consortium is corn and beans right we've got corn is an emergent layer right it's the tallest plant and the beans is a medium layer right it's the understory of the corn and at each stage we're gonna have this yeah. division cassava with the papaya exactly yeah. the coffee with the banana the banana with the eucalyptus yeah and you it's see? really interesting that we have here we really um along with the trees not only we planted seedlings but we planted lots of seeds yeah. of native species of exotic species many species really densed up right so that we have choices in the future yeah and we're able to plant uh, such a high density economically because we planted it by seed if I wanted to plant it from a seedling, you know, I paid $10 for this seedling. I really need it to grow because economically I need it to give me back, pay back that, that investment. Uh, but the, the simple fact is if I've chosen this $10 seedling and I planted it here, I might have got it wrong where it belongs. It might be that, you know, we're forcing it, we're forcing it, we're feeding it for four or five years and it's just not, it's not developing. So maybe you ask yourself why and why, maybe it's not the place it wasn't the place for him so once we're able to plant in high density with seeds seeds is economically a lot cheaper uh, there's a whole side of advanced science that says 
the planting by seed we've got better information better rootstock and all of that but in, in just for the simple fact that you can plant it economically in a higher density for the same amount of investment and then you can select out of those which thrived within those uh, many seeds we're really talking about uh, for every hundred seeds you've got to have that one tree in 15 years from now and it's really a case of just letting them have that a healthy competition you know we play we're planting cocktails of seeds and letting that boom and and then deciding where we've got clear examples here you know we, we've got examples where we've planted a meter and a half away from each other the same the same seeds or the same uh, seedling of trees and you can see a meter half away you know we might have results where it's like four or five meters and others just a half a meter tall so really get in the right spot and really the tree choosing where it belongs you know so really respecting the laws of nature and letting the healthy warm competition between the plants uh, talk to us and decide for themselves where the god-given special place is for each species yeah that's pretty cool um, so basically right to sum it up because we want to go to the next technique um, we're gonna distribute plants along their life cycle right which goes a long time so we have harvest all the time and also in each stage of evolution we've got different layers of plants and that really sums up how we address companion planting in order to take the maximum um, out of a given yeah. space right to optimize the use okay so let's keep in mind that this is just the tip of the iceberg you know this topic is so mouth-watering there's so much to it you know, we can go into the hormones and how the companion plants and how they donate hormones to each other and the importance of the roots, you know, interacting. So really, you know, stick with us and, we, you know, we've got lots more to say on this topic. Yeah, definitely. So rounding up this idea, right, the companion planting, it's all about distributing plant throughout time because they each have different cycles. And in each stage of time, we've got different plants occupying different layers of the vertical space that they occupy. All right, so we can move on to the next technique, which is pruning, which is an important technique which gives a lot of versatility to agroforestry systems. Let's go. All right, so pruning, that's a majorly important technique in agroforestry, which, which really helps um, make the system very versatile, right? Um, basically, Pruning has a very important um, function in the system as a whole, besides benefiting individual trees. First, it allows you to maintain the stratification of each species so that each occupies its proper space, right? And also, pruning has this major effect underneath the soil that many people don't know about and we tend to forget about yeah. this important thing that happens underneath the soil. It's really just sending all that information because once you've, you've pruned the leaves, it's going to invest more energy and you know all that life and all that energy is going to be directed to the to the roots and the roots is they've got that stimulation for growth yeah because um pruning when you prune a tree and you take out that old canopy and it's going to renew its canopy it puts the photosynthesis level really up in the sky right it's going to boom photosynthesis which in turn are going to feed microorganisms and do all this hormone interaction and it, that booms the whole system right yeah when we talk about pruning, i always love talking about the stimulation you know the stimulation it gives to the roots the stimulation it gives to its neighbor you know it really promotes growth you know that, that new hormones of that new freshly pruned plant or tree you know you can see impact on on that particular plant but also on the neighbor so we, we're constantly giving it pumps of stimulation yeah and you can really see the waves of growth in the system as a whole when you bring when you open that sun and you let the sunlight in and this is that local boom exactly and besides that that's uh, uh, the influence on the system as a whole but obviously individual plants benefit from pruning right so fruit trees each must be pruned according to their own architecture you know you're going to allow more air circulation on the canopy of the plant you're going to allow for more productive branches to be on the plant you're going to allow for more sunlight to reach all the leaves of the plant and even for wood trees, once you prune them, like we do, you know, taking off the top constantly, it really uh, gives you a more a higher density mm -hmm. wood. So it's really a matter of having high quality products. Yeah, right? and really invests 
in, in the trunk. Really, every time you prune it, the trunk really just gives it that extra little boom. And it becomes more cylinder instead of conical because, right, trees, they enlarge first at the base, mm -hmm. right? And they're thinner at the top. Mm -hmm. But once you prune the top, they tend to become cylindrical. So you have a very perfect um, log of wood. Yeah. So, and one other thing which is fantastic is that it, pruning allows you to bring back the system to the beginning, right? To simulate a clearing in the forest, mm -hmm. which is where most of the food we eat grows, right? In the clearing in the forest, right? All the organic matter, we just bring it all down, open yeah. up the sun so that we can have corn, so that we can have yeah. beans, bananas. Believe it or not, most of our veg that we eat in, you know, in the open monocultural system, they do come from the forest, but they come from that specific stage. You know, when the lightnings come in, that trees dropped and that light's gotten into that local uh, circle of that forest. And that's when you get all the corn sprouting up naturally. And so really it's, it's all, the, all the party happens when, you know, so when the party happens when this, when this tree drops and then you get all the fungi eating the tree and then you cover the soil and, and all of that. So, the, so we accelerate that and we replicate what happens in nature, but we, we accelerate it by by pruning and getting all this matter down on the ground and making all this party happen with this with the sun and yeah it's that's just really awesome so really much organic matter that comes real down. stimulation yeah so these are all the benefits of pruning that's why it's essential it's a major part of agroforestry systems mm -hmm. um so maybe you're asking yourself now all right you know pruning companion planting you know planting all these bunch of plants together so and I have to it. manage all of that. It's quite a lot of work, isn't it? Yeah, so many ways, so many different times of pruning. Yeah, so many <laughs> choices that you, you know, you have mm -hmm. to do a long way. And maybe you're asking yourself, you know, is all this trouble really worth it? You know, what, what, how does it, how does it work? I mean, okay, how does it pay off? Exactly. You know, okay, can I afford this, you know? And it, your, your, your doubt is uh, within reason because it really, is a bit of a complex system. There, there are many more variables than in a monoculture system, right? In, than in a conventional system. But it has a very great payback, right? You get a lot from it because you're gonna be getting all sorts of benefits, right? And we're gonna talk a bit about that in the next video. You know, all you know the cost benefit of agroforestry. You know, after understanding this complex system, all that you get as a benefit from it, right? Yeah, we're really happy you're here with us, you've stuck through with us, and you know, just stick with us, we've got your back. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna take you through this, this whole process, and we're gonna show you uh, how beneficial and how, as well, financially, you know, the impact it can have uh, in, in your life. For sure. So, we'll see you in the next video, and I'll see you there. See you later.